Garrett Blevins here with our next installment on the uh, series for practical programming for strength training. Today we're going to talk about how the book defines a microcycle, as well as go over again um, how microcycle is applied differently to novice, intermediate, and advanced uh, lifters, as well as talk about supercompensation and what that looks like and why that's so important. So, back to our trusty whiteboard. See, get this here. All right. So as you can see, this chart talks about uh, four weeks, and so the time here at the bottom is weeks, and then the little arrows that you see here are days where there's a workout. Um, what's important to understand is a workout functions as an overload of your system. For it to be a successful workout, you want the workout to be uh, difficult enough that it overloads the stimulus that your body can uh, sustain and still remain in homeostasis. So you're trying to disrupt homeostasis so that your body will adapt to that new stimulus and have a super compensation so that you can become stronger than you were before. Now for a novice, an overload event is constituted by a single workout. And so you see here if this dashed line is your baseline performance, your homeostasis line, you see that there's a slight dip here at workout one, but that the novice can recover and then come up above this line. You see it's red here, super compensation in red, come up above the line and they actually have a super compensation uh, and become stronger after a single workout. This means that they can do something called linear progression, which is add five pounds pretty much to every lift, every workout, because they're able to both overload their system, recover fully, manifest those gains which is called super compensation and then display that strength by the time the next workout comes around. Now this will uh, change slowly as the novice advances whereas it may take only 24 to 48 hours when they just start training to go through that process. By the end it may take 72 hours. Now compare that with the intermediate lifter who has a number of overload events that causes fatigue that must be adapted to by the body. They have to incur enough fatigue to actually disrupt homeostasis since their body is adapted to some disruption already. They're going to have to add more disruption, more overload events to get their body tired. So that will bring them down. But as they taper their training and allow their body to recover, they will super compensate as well. The mark of an intermediate is that this takes, you know, about a week, seven days time. And so Compare that also with these. These are two examples. This would be a late intermediate to advanced because it's taking about three weeks worth of overload events in training before there can be enough stimulus to cause both disruption of homeostasis and adaptation that allows for super compensation. And then there's an example of what it would look like if it was four weeks long. Now, what I want you to notice here is that there's not so much fatigue in the training. It's not just hard training and overload event that's just massive and like completely disruptive to a person's system over and over and over again because you have to be able to recover and come back from those overload events. That is what allows your body the time to recover so that you can manifest the gains and display it during a test. That's the difficulty. Notice also that the super compensation is always about the same. These are going to be five pound increases on each lift. And so it takes advanced lifters much longer to get those five pound gains, whereas somebody that is a novice lifter is getting them in between every workout. This means that staying as a novice in this sense is actually what you want to do. You want to stay a novice and be able to get stronger quickly for as long as possible. So this is what training should look like. You should incur a fatigue debt through overload events, which in this case for powerlifting is your workouts with the barbell. And then you should allow ample time for recovering by tapering training volume primarily, but also a number of other factors such as sleep, adequate nutrition, um, and recovery through maybe foam rolling or something like that, um, so that you can have this super compensation. Here you are developing your strength and then you are manifesting that strength and then displaying it when you lift more than you've ever lifted before. Hope that helps you understand what super compensation is.